Hello my friends! Anyone who's heard of Final Fantasy XIV has likely heard about how stellar the story is and how the fanbase will viciously maul you if you spoil so much as a sliver of information coming out of it. While of course these things are greatly exaggerated, sometimes, it just goes to show that people feel that Final Fantasy XIV does have a great story to tell and that it should be enjoyed as organically as possible. To which I firmly agree. If you enjoy fantasy and you enjoy storytelling, then why not enjoy it at your own pace and at your own leisure? However, like most things in the world, Final Fantasy XIV isn't perfect. Which, in of itself, is a controversial statement to a lot of people. There are moments within character development and story arcs within Final Fantasy XIV that I feel are amazingly written. But not every story in Final Fantasy XIV shares that. And a great example of this is the Paladin Quest Chain which is a series of job quests that many have agreed to be not so great. So I asked myself, why? And after doing a bit of research, I think I've come up with some pretty good answers. Firstly, Paladin is a class or job that isn't new to video games, or Final Fantasy as a franchise. When someone says Paladin, it invokes a certain image in a lot of people's heads when they remember all of the different games, and stories they've heard that use this word. World of Warcraft is a great example, as the paladins in that game have a very distinct design, moveset, and distinction within their own lore. So, when writing for something like a paladin, a lot of the work is kind of already done for you. The tricky part is making what is already known work within the world or narrative you're trying to tell. As such, you need to take time to explain why this certain job or class is the way it is within this world and how it functions within, which unfortunately is where things start to fall apart. And I think I can show exactly why. If you observe the Paladin quest chain and compare it to other jobs, something obvious starts to make its appearance. Let's say you are just starting Final Fantasy XIV and you know for certain that you want to play a Paladin in this MMO. Well, you start with your class, Gladiator, and enjoy that level 1 to 30 quest chain alongside the MSQ. Within the level 30 to 50 quest chain, you start to learn what it is to be a paladin and why they exist in the first place. The paladins of Final Fantasy XIV aren't these wandering bastions of hope and defense that many other people attribute the job to being. In this world, the first ever paladins were the Sultan Sworn who are essentially the king's royal guard. This isn't a bad twist. In order for someone to be a royal guard, you like to assume that they have to be very powerful, dedicated, loyal, steadfast, all the great qualities you'd want to see in a knight in shining armor. But the level 30 to 50 quest chain doesn't stop there. It explains now that there is a wild card, this idea of being a free paladin. Someone who wears the colors and weapons of a paladin, but isn't tied down to the throne of Uldah. Someone who ultimately is what high fantasy says a paladin should be. And toward the end of the 50 quest chain, you see that. As the paladins rally together and try to purge the corruption that is starting to brew within the syndicate of Uldah. But even after this quest chain is over, the idea of being a free paladin doesn't die. In fact, the main character is given a full set of Paladin armor, which goes against every tradition that the Sultan Sworn are known for. For lack of a better example, the main character being given a full set of Paladin armor without pledging themselves to the throne of Uldah is more or less considered heresy. After the level 30 to 50 quest chain is over, there are now two free Paladins walking across Eorzea, the first of their kind. Which is good, because the level 50 to 60 quest expands on this. Throughout the level 50 to 60 quest chain, it is revealed that another entity is trying to encourage someone that you've been talking to to also become a free paladin. Someone who is willing to take up a sword and shield and fight for what's right in the world. This is interesting, as it reveals that this could be the birth of a brand new paladin order within Eorzea. Something that's never been seen before. History quite literally writing itself. But then something unexpected happens. This new page in history suddenly stops. 
Toward the end of the 50 to 60 quest chain, the new free paladins meet with the older generation of Sultan Sworn to discuss the future of the Paladin Arts, which ultimately revolves around a relic of the Paladin Order, the Holy Blade known as Oathkeeper. This ultimately should have been the turning point for the Paladins as we know them, as Oathkeeper, the ultimate sign of leadership within the Paladin Order, chose a free Paladin as its successor. From a purely lore standpoint, this means that the Free Paladins are technically seen as more worthy than the Sultan Sworn. At least, now they are. I don't know about any of you, but when I saw this in the story, I was excited. I was jubilant at the thought that we would be watching the creation of a brand new Paladin Order within Eorzea. One that isn't tied down to Uldah, one that is free to build their own station and begin their campaign of protection across the entire world. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. Despite having chosen a free paladin as the successor, Oathkeeper was ultimately given back to the Sultan Sworn who returned it to Uldah. One of the paladins that had been mentoring the player character also chose to return to Uldah as a friend and advisor. And the other free paladin that had been mentored beside you along the 50 to 60 quest chain simply admits that he's going to continue wandering Eorzea in training. The dream of a brand new paladin order fell apart. The free paladins went their own separate ways, seeking out their own sense of justice. Which, on paper, isn't a horrible idea if it wasn't already being done. This moment with Oathkeeper is where I feel the Paladin Quest chain officially falls apart. No longer is the story about expanding upon the Paladin arts, or what it means to be a Paladin, or the creation of something beyond a royal guard. The quest of becoming a greater Paladin simply ends there. Now of course, to some people that might sound confusing, because aren't there more job quests later down the line? And yes, you're absolutely right, there are but it has nothing to do with being a paladin. In Final Fantasy XIV, the 60-70 job quest chain for paladin ultimately has nothing to do with the job itself. In fact, it has more to do with being a gladiator than anything else. The level 60-70 quest chain went back to being class quests, not job quests. Which is unfortunate, seeing as paladin did have much more to expand on from a lore perspective. And then, of course, you finally have the level 80 capstone quest, which is more or less supposed to wrap up the job quests so that the game can focus on role quests from there on out. Not a horrible idea at all. But once again, the level 80 capstone quest for Paladin had nothing to do with being a Paladin. Once again, you end up talking to the people and characters that have to do with the Gladiator class quests. You don't learn more about being a paladin, you don't gain any insight about the future of what this job offers later down the line. The paladin quest chain ended at level 60, and I feel that this is what ultimately soured many of the lovers of this job to the job quests they got within Final Fantasy XIV. There were more job quests that had to do with Gladiator than Paladin. From level 30 to 50, the Dark Knight quest has everything to do with being a Dark Knight. This theme is ultimately continued in the 50 to 60 quest chain, but unlike the Paladin quest chain, it doesn't stop at 60, it continues. The Dark Knight quest chain from level 60 to 70 takes the lessons of the two previous arcs and combines them into an even grander question, with their own quandaries and philosophies. It even expands on the powers of a Dark Knight and brings the player to question what exactly this job is capable of if brought to full power. And finally, you come to the level 80 quest, the capstone for Dark Knight, which, yet again, only had to do with being a Dark Knight. From level 30 to 80, it was only about Dark Knight its ethics, its powers, its place in the world, and its history. Paladins didn't get this treatment. From level 30 to 50, it was about them and their history. 
From 60, it was more about what it means to be a paladin, but at the end of the level 60 quest, it dropped the steady evolution of paladin into something more. And what did the job quest do after that? Well, 60 to 70 went back to being about gladiators, and so did the level 80 capstone. So, with all of this in mind, I can understand why I hear so many people say that the Paladin quest chain is bad. Because ultimately, the game doesn't really take advantage of the potential Paladins truly had. So, I'm curious. Tell me in the comments below what you thought about the Paladin quest chain if you enjoyed it, or if you didn't. For me personally, I've always loved the idea of Paladins in high fantasy. So I do feel that Paladins themselves were heavily underutilized within Final Fantasy XIV's narrative. But that's just me. That does not mean I think the job is bad within the game. Far from it. Paladin, I feel, has one of the more interesting variety of skills that tanks possess. But that's a conversation for another day. If you've not subscribed to my channel but want to see more lore in the future, please do. I'm always creating something new. But until then... Stay safe, my friends.